Hey everybody, this is Daniel from Catfish Sumo and today I'm going to go over an electrical system that you can install in your kayak by yourself safely to be able to power your fish finder, your lights, and any other accessories that you want. So let's get started. When you're working with an electrical system, especially in your kayak, there's some really important things to keep in mind. First of all, make sure to use marine grade components. So the wires that you're using, the switches, the other components, the lights, everything, connectors needs to be marine grade stuff. What that means is that first of all, it usually has a little bit extra um, ins insulation on the wires so that during all of the you know trauma of moving and travel and all that kind of stuff, um, it's not gonna wear apart. It's just a different higher grade stuff than what you would put normally in like your house. House, um, because your house doesn't uh, bounce down the highway all the time and it doesn't go out on the water and all that. Um, next is it's usually going to be have some kind of uh, waterproof or weatherproof rating. Um, that's pretty important because you're going to have water in your boat even when you put things in waterproof cases and all that kind of stuff. There's moisture, weather, water, all that kind of stuff that gets in. And it's important to have marine grade weatherproof or, or uh, waterproof or weatherproof rated items that you're going to be putting into your system, okay? Um, next, for a DC system, it's really important to have everything fused because it's all going to be powered from one battery. If you ever have a connector that gets wet or something gets spliced or something like that, you need to have everything fused so that that fuse will burn out before anything else bad can happen. There's lots of other safety information that you need to keep in mind. Make sure that you're reading instructions of things that you're using. Get an electrician's opinion if you need help. Um, but the last thing that I'll mention is to make sure to use appropriately sized wire. Don't ever downgrade or skimp on the wire. It would be better to step up and gauge, which is actually a lower number, to have a thicker wire that you know is going to last and is no, you know is going to be able to carry um, the current that you need rather than undersizing your wire and risking something getting hot and melting or catching on fire or something like that. All right. So let me show you one formula that's pretty helpful. Um, if you are a DIY person, you can also look these calculators up online, but let me show you one formula that's going to be important and it's going to be watts divided by 12 equals amps. So this 12 represents the number of volts in your system. For a DC system, like I'm using, it's a 12 volt battery that we're running everything off of. So you would divide your number of watts divided by 12 equals the number of amps. And amps is what um, the wires are rated for. So for example, if you have a 24 watt light, like an LED light, divided by 12 equals amps. So we're going to do 12 divided by 24 is two, so two amps, all right? So to run wires for this light, this 24 watt light, we would need a wire that can carry two amps, all right, across it. So when you're looking at wire, you're gonna make sure to look at, there's a charts that'll show you how many amps can be carried across that gauge of wire. Um, so this is the one formula. Um, the rest of it's really not like math complicated. It's just making sure that you have everything connected properly. Um, but this is one formula to keep in mind when you are going to gauge, uh, uh, measure the gauge of wire that you need for your system, all right? So if this makes your eyes gloss over a formula or something like that, make sure just to ask an expert's opinion and make sure that they can help you pick out the right wire for your system. Okay, the next thing that I wanna do before we go to the kayak is I'm gonna sketch out the system that I plan on building just to show you all of the components and how I plan on connecting them together, okay? So I'm gonna be starting out in my front of my kayak and I'm gonna have a 12 volt battery. Oops. I plan on using a seven and a half amp hour AGM battery. I'll talk about that a little bit later when we get to the battery component. The next component I plan on adding is a lap light that's gonna go right in the lap of my kayak. So let's do like that to represent that light. Um, I'm also gonna have an overhead light, so let's draw that guy up here. Something like that. All right. Um, I also am gonna have my fish finder. I also plan on having a cigarette lighter sized um, port. It has two USB ports and it has a little voltmeter in it. Um, so let's draw that guy down here. Um, I use this to be able to power my camera and charge my phone or anything else if I ever decide in the future that I want to add something that is just a USB port. If I want to do a, a Bluetooth speaker or something like that, anything that can be charged off of a USB port um, will be able to get powered from there. Okay, so this covers all my accessories. Next, let's look at some of the additional components that I have, things like switches and a fuse box and all that kind of stuff that I plan on wiring into the system, and then we're gonna connect it all together. The first component that I plan on adding is right off of the battery, I plan on having a power switch so that with one switch, I can turn on or off the entire system. 
Um, even though um, your fish finder and lights and everything else turn off, there is always some residual electricity that gets burned. Um, so I want to be able to, the first wire that comes off the battery, I want to be able to have a switch right there and be able to turn it on or off to decide whether any power makes it any further. Um, I plan on having a light board or a switch board, which is going to have three rocker switches. That's going to go right up in the front of my kayak uh, where I can reach it and be able to turn everything else on. I also am going to have a fuse box. I'm going to have a 12 volt DC, um, uh, they usually call it a fuse or, dis or 12 volt distributor panel. It acts a lot like a breaker box in your house. So basically, usually you would have inline fuses going to all of these different components. I'm going to put all of those in one box. It's going to have uh, like a positive terminal, a negative terminal. You plug these various fuses in. Your power goes from the battery through each of those individual fuses and then straight over to the components. That way you don't have all of these different inline fuses all around the boat. Everything's right in one place where you can check them, um, turn the whole thing off, turn the whole thing on. The last thing that I want to add is really just for convenience and I want to be able to have a um, cord come off of my battery and I'm going to put a quick connector on there. Um, these are usually used to look something like this, usually used for 12 volt systems and that's going to be an easy way that I can charge my battery um, without having to open anything up or worry about alligator clips. I'm just going to have an easy quick um, connector right here going straight to my battery. Now that we've picked all of the accessories that I'm showing in green and all of the other um, electronic components or electric components that I'm showing in blue, let's connect everything together and I'll show you what the wiring system is going to look like to keep things clean, to keep things organized, and make sure that we stay safe. Okay, within this system we're going to have two wires. We're going to have red ones and we're going to have black ones. Red ones are carrying power from the positive terminal on the battery over to components. Black ones are going to be returning the negative um, uh, channel back to the negative pole on the battery. Now the thing about systems, um, usually like RV systems, boat systems, and things like that, is a lot of times, here's what they would do. Um, let's draw a component. You'd have a component like this, like let's say it's a light bulb. What you would do is you would carry the positive line from a battery to that component. And then across the whole, like the chassis of an RV or something like that, automobiles do the same thing, is, is that you would just carry a short wire off of that component to um, the chassis or some common ground, the frame, something running throughout the entire vehicle. That's convenient because if you have your battery sitting over here, positive, negative, it's convenient because you can run the negative pole off of this just to whatever that frame is and then all of your components you really only need to deliver the positive power from the battery to the component and then across the entire vehicle or RV or whatever it is the whole entire frame acts as the negative wire carrying uh, the negative current back from that component back to the battery. That's really convenient, saves a lot of wire, saves a lot of trouble in automobiles and RVs, but in marine systems, unless it's a really big system, for something like a small boat or a kayak, you really are going to uh, want to run a positive and a negative wire to and from every component. The reason is, first of all, well, the kayaks made, kayak that I'm using is made out of plastic, so there's not really any good way to run the ground back across for everything. Um, also because you're going to have everything uh, watertight and insulated, you really don't just want studs going onto a frame or something like that, um, where you no, have no idea what kind of water is going to connect from there to any other power system. So I'm going to be running a positive and a negative wire to every component to and from back to the battery. Um, now let's show you how I'm going to route all of that stuff through my DC fuse panel and then to the switches. Okay, starting off, I'm just going to run the positive power pull from the battery to all the components and then we're going to come back and run the negative wires, okay? Um, so starting off, the first thing that I'm going to do is run off of my battery, the pow positive terminal, I'm going to run through this main power switch. It's going to be my main shutoff for the entire boat. There is some discussion, sometimes in RVs they would put this on the negative pole. Usually that's because they have the whole entire thing grounded and so they don't want anything coming back to the battery. It would be better for it to ground uh, like to the outside actual ground rather than uh, building up any current. Because I'm running wires to and from every component, I'm going to go ahead and cut power right off the battery so that no power is getting out into the boat, no chance of anything building up out there. From my main power switch, the next thing that I'm going to do is run up to the uh, positive terminal. 
on my DC breaker. Now what happens is that you feed one positive line to the breaker panel, the fuse panel right here, and then you're going to have little positive lines coming off of through each of these fuses. So the electricity runs from the battery through the switch, it runs to this main board right here, and then individually out through all those fuses. That saves from having to have inline fuses all over the boat. It's all just stored in one place. Plus they make it really easy. You can use um, like forked connectors and screws to keep it all right there, and I'll show you that when we get to the kayak. So my positive line is coming to here. Uh, from there, let's see, I know I'm going to have one coming straight off to my uh, fish finder. Um, that's going to be a straight line, no switches or anything like that because all of the electronics, the on off, everything else like that is housed with the actual fish finder. Let's see, the next thing, let's power my lap light. So I'm going to be coming off of one of the other fuses. I'm going to be going to through one of these switches and then out to my lap light. Um, next, let's power that backlight. I'm going to be coming off of one of the other fuses and through these switches and over to my overhead light. And finally, let's, um, I think that I am going to have this switched. Let's think about this for a second. Originally, I was thinking about having this USB port switch so that I could turn it on, but I can't really think of anything right now that I would plug into there that I would actually want to switch for. So instead, let's come right off of a fuse um, over to that um, USB port. All right, so it looks like we're delivering positive power to everything. The last positive red wire that I'm going to have is coming straight off this positive pole. I'm going to have it going up to this connector. That's where I'm going to be able to charge and uh, plug my charger quick in and out um, off of this pole. Okay. The last thing I'll say here about the positive line is that um, you'll see it when we get into the kayak, you're going to see a really thick gauge coming off of this um, uh, battery here and it's going to go through this switch and it's going to go over to the fuse panel right here. You're going to see a really thick gauge. I way um, oversized the gauge of that wire because I don't know. I'm going to leave a couple extra slots for plugging other things in in the future. I don't know what else in the future I'm going to build into this system. So I'm going to oversize this front line right here coming to the fuse panel so that in the future I could run some other stuff off of it and I'm never going to have to worry about having to go back and upgrade that wire right there. Alright guys, now that we have all of the positive lines run from our battery to all of the components, let's go ahead and run the negative lines returning power back to the battery, okay? So um, everything is actually going to be coming back to this main fuse switch. So I'm going to have one main line coming off the battery and going to the negative. They basically just have like a bar. You'll see it when we get to the kayak, but they basically just have a bar with a bunch of screws. That acts as, you know, normally in an RV, they would just run everything to the frame. Um, that's what that bar is going to act as, is just bring all of the negative lines back from all the components, put them through that one bar, and that one bar is going to get served back to the battery. So uh, from this point now, we're really just talking about the fuse panel forward, okay? So here's our lap light. We are delivering through a switch the positive line. Now we're going to be bringing a negative line back to that bar, okay? Um, same thing for our fish finder. We're going to be bringing a negative line back to that bar. For our overhead light, we need to bring a negative line. Uh, it's going to get kind of messy here. Back to that bar. And then for our USB charging port right here, we're going to be running a negative line back to that bar, okay? Oh, and then on our charger, we are going to have a negative line that's going to be coming straight onto that post. So on each of the posts from the battery, we're going to have two lines coming off. One's for the charger, and then everything else is just to serve the boat. So this is our entire system for the kayak right now. It's a little bit messy. Sorry for all the squiggly lines. If you need to pause it right here to be able to zoom in and look at the colors, basically what you'll see is every single component is going to have a positive and a negative wire running to it. And the positive wires are all going to be running through a fuse, and some of the positive wires for the lights are going to be running through a switch, all right? So now that we're done with this, let's go look at the kayak and we'll show you how we put everything together. All right, now let's look at the kayak and I will show you all of the wiring that I just described and how I actually got it into the kayak. We're gonna look at the battery, all of the accessories that come off of the battery, and then all of the different um, electronic components that help manage the whole system together. So let's get started. I have my battery box, my master cutoff switch, my fuse box, and everything else up in the front of my kayak. Then I've just run um, lines through the kayak hole down to each accessory. Starting with my battery, I have a Duracell 7.5 amp hour AGM battery. 
off of that you can see off of the two lugs first of all this is that charging cable that's where I can easily plug in my charger if I need to at the end of the day off of that I have my two main power cables that go over to the fuse uh, panel for my fuse panel all of the separate uh, lines that go to each individual component come off and then right inside the panel I have my uh, power uh, monitor and also the two USB ports so I can use those to run my camera or to charge any other components, my phone or anything like that. Um, and then in between, off of the positive line of the cable between there and the fuse box, I do have my master power switch. On the fuse box, I have right now four fuses that I'm using. I have a fuse for my overhead lights, uh, for this fused outlet, and then um, for my fish finder, and then for my deck lights, my lap light. From there, I'm running everything out. I ran it through a conduit. I also am using marine grade wiring along here. So I have um, a cable running out that's going to go over to uh, my main outlet uh, through the hole where I have my power coming out for my overhead light and then also for the fish finder. And then I have one line that comes off of here that has um, the power for my lap light, which I just have mounted right here. Eventually, if I can find one that's either curved or if I can find a good way to mount it, I'd like to have it on the bottom of my uh, propel drive right here. But for right now, I just have it kind of zip tied to the side right here. Um, with waterproof cabling running back inside the sleeve. Um, but that just gives me just a little bit of light coming right off um, into, my, into my lap. Now this is my switch panel right here. Um, I put a three switch panel in here. The guy that I bought it from had one rocker switch right here, which he was running, I think, um, underwater lights, like green bait lights. Um, so I took that out and patched this hole, and then I put a three rocker uh, switch panel right here. Um, two that I'm using, one is for my overhead light, um, and then one is for my lap light right here. Um, and those are both switched off of the fuse panel. And then, so the wires come from the battery to the fuse panel, from the fuse panel to the switch, and then from the switch to each of those components. Uh, so the lap light is just fully wired in right here. And then um, the other one goes back through the hole and comes out over here with my fish finder. And I just have a waterproof kind of connector on the front of that. What that allows me to do is very easily um, if I'm not fishing at night and I don't need this overhead light, I just unplug it and tuck it away in storage. Um, or if I do need it at night, all I have to do is uh, plug it together like this. Um, and then I have enough wire on here that I can put it in the back or I can move it up to the front, just kind of wherever is best for that particular night. Um, and then I have my two cords for my fish finder, some data cable um, you know, to the transducer and then the power cord right here. So those all go right there. So the last thing is that as I was planning this, I planned a couple of future upgrades. Uh, so I definitely left, um, I left one switch here, which I think I'm thinking might eventually do navigation lights or a um, kind of spotlight off the front. Um, but I'll have one kind of blank spot if I ever want something else switched in the future. I won't have to cut any new holes. Um, and the cabling is already ready uh, to run right to that. Um, I also have um, a couple extra fuse spots. So in the future, if I ever add anything else that does need to be fused, another light, or uh, do anything different with my fish finder or anything like that, all of that's ready to go right there. The last thing I could see myself adding someday would be um, a solar panel on the front. So there are some really nice small solar panels that I could run right off the front right here, and that would help keep my battery charged. The thing about a solar panel is you need the uh, solar panel and then you need a charge controller and that helps make sure that you don't overcharge your battery it's kind of managing the power coming in off the panel and going to the battery and making sure you don't overcharge so maybe I would add that the thing is that usually my uh, my I'm still gonna have this connected to the drip charger and battery tender and the garage if I am ever leaving it for a long amount of time so I don't imagine unless I was going to do like a several day trip without having power and I needed to keep it charged throughout the day um, maybe then I would add the solar panel but I have everything in here ready wired in case I ever add it that'll be an easy thing to add I hope this was helpful for you guys um, remembering the safety piece and then looking at how I wired everything together. If there's any questions you have or you want to see something else up close or you have questions about your own um, kayak wiring, feel free to leave me a question in the comments and I'll do my very best to help you in any way I can.